AJS. Fred Dibner owned one. They're my favourite bikes. And let's find out why. 1856, Wensfield, England. Engineering genius Joe Stevens was born. He grew up and became a blacksmith and started his own company called J. Stevens & Co. Joseph and his wife got bored easily, so they had nine children. <gasps> Lucy, Harry, George, Joseph, Lily, Albert John, Ethel, Daisy and William Billy. <sighs> Harry was the oldest son and was soon learning some engineering skills from Papa Joe. Joseph acquired an American single-cylinder four-stroke Mitchell engine for use in his company. Harry was fixated on this thing, but soon he decided he could do much better. So Harry and Joseph's third son, Joe Jr., started redesigning the engine from the ground up. These guys obviously knew what they were doing, as their redesigned engine outperformed the original in reliability, efficiency and power. Now at this point I should remind you that they're not strapping these engines to motorcycles just yet. They were using them for manufacturing purposes. The bikes are coming though, just relax, this bit's important. They decided to manufacture engines under the name Stevens Motor Manufacturing Company in 1899, which eventually saw the brothers form in the better known A.J. Stevens & Company Limited on the 14th of November 1909, with the intent on making motorcycles. They set up shop opposite their father's company on Retreat Street in Wolverhampton. It's an accountant's now, which is ironic, and you'll soon find out why. Anyways, the company soon started making motorcycles, with Harry taking the lead. They kicked things off with the Model A and the Model B, with the Model A being the cheaper option with a 2.5 horsepower single cylinder engine, costing just 37 guineas, which is around 40 quid. The production of these bikes was complete, in 1910 and it was successfully shown at the Olympia Cycle Show in London. People liked them and the orders started to come in, but the brothers knew these machines needed a stage to perform on, so the brothers decided to take their machine to a little thing we like to call... <laughs> the Isle of Man TT. Riders Jack Stevens and J.D. Cork took two specially modified versions and finished 15th and 14th place, which is a huge victory considering AJS only started making bikes the year prior. 1914 soon came round and the company was so busy with production difficulties, little thought was put into the Isle of Man TT until last minute. Panic stations people! Even with the last minute development, they managed to create a 2 and 3 quarter horsepower sports bike which they entered 5 of. This picture shows the 1914 lineup with the Stevens brothers in the background. From left to right, we have Jack Stevens, Billy Heaton, Harry Stevens, Sarah Williams, George Stevens, Eric Williams, Joe Stevens Jr., and Bert Haddock. They are literally the original Peaky Blinders. Not only did they have the looks, they smashed the Isle of Man races. Eric Williams finished first, Cyril Williams second, W. Jones fourth, Bert Haddock sixth, and Billy Heaton 29th. The brothers had finally proved their AGS race machines were the best in the world, and sales continued to soar, so the brothers increased their size to keep up with demand later in 1914. This increase in productions continued over the next decade, despite World War I, and in 1924 the production had grown to 230,000 square feet, with 31 different departments. In 1927 they released the Series H product range, with a sporty 3.49 horsepower H5 and a bigger 7.99 horsepower H9. Let's not forget the Tora had 8 horsepower. The 2015 Ninja H2 has 310 horsepower. That comparison is just insane. They got some respectable finishes in the mid-20s Isle of Man TT, but no win. However, elsewhere the AGS machines were winning the French Grand Prix, the Speed Championship of Europe and much more. The company was famous for looking after its employees, even providing them with a licensed bar and encouraging sports and recreation. This helped them greatly during strikes, as most employees just continued to work. Success continued for the company, which grew into sidecar manufacturing and radio manufacturing until the late 20s. It was all going so well. But car manufacturers were targeting motorcycle owners with cheap economy cars and the other sidearms of AGS were in fierce competition too. In the late 20s, AGS were producing the M range with models like the M7, a 349cc sport bike, and the M9 being a luxury tourer. Sales began to decline, and despite AGS lowering prices and even making their own economy cars, 
Accounts showed that in the late 20s, the company had lost £89,000. This caused share prices to drop and saw the company take out a loan in order to sustain themselves. In spite of all the company's issues, the senior Alaman TT race was once again entered. However, an AJS rider by the name of Freddie Hicks was tragically killed while racing, and this marks the sad end of the company's TT career. By the early 1930s, the company was selling off its assets, including the land and naming rights. The AJS name still lives on today, used by other companies for mainly badge change engineering, but some of them actually look quite cool. There's also a statue in Wolverhampton named the Lone Rider, which is a nice reminder of the great company that affected both the surrounding area and the motorcycle industry forever. Despite the company eventually failing, I still think what AGS did to the early motorcycling world was amazing. They smashed the Isle of Man TT and looked after staff in the process. For these reasons, I think AGS is the coolest bike brand ever. And I mean, just look at these bikes. They're beautiful. Now I've only covered the basics, which was quite difficult to pick and choose the most interesting bits. But anyone who's interested in more detail, head over to the History website by Bev Parker, which is linked below. It's an amazing piece and a huge thanks for the info and pictures. Thanks for watching guys, if you enjoyed this video, please uh, leave a like and let me know, and I'll do more in the future. Cheers, bye!